Hello, and welcome to the Disruptive Innovation Festival. I'm Miranda Schnitger from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, and today we're talking about cities. I'm delighted to be joined today by Wayne, Chief Executive of the London Waste and Recycling Board, Caro, who's Deputy Secretary of Economic Development and Labour for the City of Sao Paulo, and Filippo, who's Policy Advisor to the Vice Mayor of Milan. Welcome. And also welcome to all of you online. If you have any questions and thoughts during the sessions, please do put them in the comment box on the, on the session page or tweet us with hashtag thinkdiff. Great. So Wayne, Caro, Filippo, lots of cities around the world are starting to work with circular economy to deliver new systems within their cities. And in each of your cities, it's a different context. We're talking about different geographies. Can you give us a bit of context as to why circular economy matters in your city and where you are with it? Filippo, do you want to kick us off? Um, Milan is developing uh, several uh, actions uh, towards circular economy transition. Um, for example, we, um, uh, we are working on this in, uh, in the urban planning field, uh, in the food policy, in the environment uh, uh, and the tra public transportation. So that's quite a wide range of yeah. different areas. Yeah. And uh, Milan ranks as the first city uh, for circular economy in, uh, out of the 10 most populated cities in Italy, according to a study of the Bicocca University, which is a, a good starting point, but of course we should improve. I love the fact, though, that in Italy there's this ranking, of, of like, almost like setting up a competition to achieve this goal. Yes. Of course, as a city, our, our tool to, uh, to, to promote this transition are our uh, urban policies. Mm -hmm. uh, but they should be urban policies that involve all the relevant stakeholders of the city. So from the private citizens, normal citizens, to, to push their behavioral changes, mm -hmm. to the private sector, to the, and also to involve the third sector, so grant makers, NGOs, and, mm -hmm. and, and foundation. Um, so the tool are policies and uh, our drivers in, in, in Milan are, for example, our municipal agencies that are controlled by the municipality. Okay. So for example, school canteens, uh, meal provider, uh, public transportation, um, and, and, and another example that we'll yeah. do later. Uh, to, be, to be concrete and assess our, our policy, uh, we have set some, some targets, some goals that uh, in some cases are goals coming from international frameworks. Just two or three examples. Um, the um, SDGs 12.3, mm -hmm. uh, we would like to achieve, to, to, to give our contribution to achieve this goal. So 50% uh, reduction of uh, food waste by okay. 2030, or 70% reduction of uh, soil consumption that is set out in, set out in our um, Urban Planning Act, for example, or uh, reach the 70% of uh, uh, recycling rate. Uh, or uh, the last one can, that I can uh, say is to reduce uh, up to 50% of the waste production. This is the uh, zero declaration of C40. Caro, you're on the other side of the world in uh, Brazil. <laughs> yes, in <laughs> a huge city. In a very large city, exactly. Yes. How does circular economy look in Sao Paulo? Yes, as Filippo was, Filippo was saying, we work with food a lot. Mm -hmm. We have a program, a food waste control and loss reduction program. And we work with organic food at public schools too, and compost, composting too. Mm -hmm. We have nowadays five public composting areas in our city, and we are going to have 17 till the end of 2020. Right. Yes, this is a, this is a, a great action uh, direct action for the food security and for circular economy. And is it the city hall that's pushing that? It's your initiative? Yes, it's public. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. It is from our mayor Bruno Covas. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's new mm -hmm. in our country and it's new in our city. Great. And we are working hard to 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 work with organic and local production. Thirty okay. percent of our city we have a thousand and five hundred square kilometers of mm -hmm. territory and 30% of our city is a rural area. So we work with family farmers by qualifying them, by empowering to, to get better and to increase their business mm -hmm. and to work with 
food quality, with food security and with social programs too. Okay, so you're really seeing it as both an education piece but also a almost business skills opportunity it sounds like there in yes. terms of training and skills. Exactly, we, we say that we must do in our secretary about economic development and labor. We work with labor, with work, and we work with any possi possibility to increase, uh, to generate uh, income. Okay. So that's why we use qualification mm -hmm. and especially in this theme, in mm -hmm. this contest mm -hmm. about food with family farmers. That's great. And, and is it with families in, in high vulnerability situation. Okay. And is it the economic development and labour um, department within Sao Paulo that's, that's sort of coordinating and driving circular economy across the city de departments? Are you the hub? Yes, yes. Our secretary does this. Okay. We have coordinators, mm -hmm. uh, one who works only with economic development. Mm -hmm. We study the food... Um, the future of work, the mm -hmm. labor of the future. We study our vocations, our city vocations, mm -hmm. and our territories' vocations, vocations to pot potentialize it. I love that because it's um, the sector economy. I mean, we are talking about the economy and shifting mm -hmm. the system. So yes, making yes. sure that it's part of economic development and labor considerations, yes. what, what impact it will have and where the jobs are, I think is so important. Certainly. Wayne, yes. you're at the London Waste and Recycling Board, which sounds like coming at it from another yes. angle, but tell us a bit about how it's working in London. Well, I mean, that, that's interesting because, you know, I was listening to, to you guys and um, the, the, our focus originally was waste. So, you know, we have the C40 kind of uh, aspirations around uh, zero waste to landfill. Uh, the Mayor of London has set targets around uh, recycling for our municipalities. And uh, we came out, we are a, a partnership of London's municipalities and the Mayor of London. Mm -hmm. And we came at this from the perspective of what waste infrastructure do we need for London okay. going forward to 2050. That was a time horizon that we were looking at. And um, this was sort of around 2015, actually. And we started to think, um, uh, w we're not going to do a traditional uh, predict and provide waste management scenario. We're going to, we'd heard about this thing called the circular economy and we, we felt that needed, we needed to explore that and we needed to um, incorporate that within the, the London strategic sort of architecture, if you like. Um, and the more we found out about it, the more we realised it wasn't to do with traditional waste management per se. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, but it was or it, it wasn't? wasn't. It wasn't. You know, we had these inner loops. Mm. What it's to do with is about consumption. You know, it's about reducing consumption it, it, of, 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 of stuff, of mm -hmm. virgin stuff. And the things you had on the video, making things last longer, sharing. So our programme is really designed around, yes, recycling. Absolutely, it's about recycling. Certainly now, that's our major focus with municipalities but it's also about encouraging and incentivizing startups and businesses who are utilizing some of these interesting circular business models like uh, sharing making things last um, servitization all those kinds of really interesting stuff especially around plastics mm -hmm. and the built environment and food we're working with you guys now in new york as a flagship city for food, we've just been announced uh, yes, by the Animal Car Foundation. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we're excited about that. But yes, our, 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 our big focus for us is supporting those those startups because we see them kind of going out into the economy and sprinkling their magic circular economy dust <laughs> on the economy. And you know, I find this fascinating. Just by doing uh, what they do, doing the right thing, um, um, they're providing services that people choose to to buy, um, and it it kind of saves the planet. And I think that's amazing. We're not asking people to take a reduction in their standard of living. Right. People are choosing yeah. to share. They're choosing to buy stuff that lasts longer. They're choosing to free themselves from the burden uh, often of ownership. Okay. You know? because, the, because the quality of the things that are being offered under circular economy are, are high enough. We've it, moved on. Yeah, okay. Know? We've moved on. We've moved to, we've moved to a point where you know, I don't want to have to have the circular economy drill. I want to go to the library of things and borrow a drill when I need it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to store it all the time. Yes. You know, we've moved on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. So the businesses that we support are, s are being successful because 
uh, citizens are, I think, in many ways ahead of us as policymakers, we're rushing to catch up. Right, I love that. So engagement of the citizen is actually a really important part of this for you. Um, as it will become increasingly important now we want to scale this up, absolutely, okay. yes. Yeah. But the point is that we've not had to engage with them in the sense that you should do this. No, it's to exchange <laughs> best practices. Yeah. We are talking about it um, yesterday and today too. We need to put everybody together the public sector, the private sector, the NGOs, and everybody has to, to, to put our hands together to, to make it better and, mm -hmm. and to really make the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't need to reinvent. Mm -hmm. We need to, to take the best practices mm -hmm. from each other Damn. and put it all together, yeah. and, and that, that's the way okay. it will work. Wayne, you're doing some interesting stuff around funding and working with SMEs, mm. and tell us a bit about that. Mm. I will do, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting, though, before I start, because uh, London are doing similar things. There's themes okay. emerging across, right. you know, all, all of the cities. There is a uh, the mayor's banned, you know, plastics and used plastics within his uh, within City Hall. We've uh, introduced circular economy principles into procurement practices. Mm -hmm. The mayor's an SDG 12.3 champion. Uh, there's a focus on local food growing in London, you know, so all of, there's, there's lots of similarities. Um, we've got a, uh, a route map which we published in 2017, a circular economy route map for London, which identified um, five focus areas mm -hmm. um, and food and textiles and plastics and waste electronic equipment and the built environment. Yeah. They're all those, they're all there and lots of cities have similar-ish uh, focus areas, maybe there's some differences uh, occasionally, but you know they're the, they're the kind of general things that people focus on. Um, so we're doing some stuff on fashion, working with big brands, and we have a really uh, fantastic um, award-winning fashion uh, uh, campaign called um, uh, Love Not Landfill, okay. aimed at young people from 18 to 24. Um, we're doing lots of really good stuff with social media. So I'll, I'll Put that to one side, <laughs> because it's, it's great. There's so many examples to talk about. They're, 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 but I mean, we've all got re some really good examples. Mm. This, the idea of sharing those examples is really pertinent. You know, where cities should get together and talk about this because we've got so much to learn from each other. This is a, a really great, you know, just meeting you guys. I've never met. I've met you first yesterday, which is fantastic. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Then <laughs> um, Ada, there you go. Um, so He's speaking we a little bit of yeah. languages <laughs> before. Yes. <laughs> I'm helping you out with your Portuguese, that's Wayne right. Wayne is a Portuguese speaker. <laughs> oh, Brigado. Italian's next. Um, I've gone red. So, uh, yes, we've got a focus on helping um, startups and SMEs. Right, yeah. Uh, in the circular economy space, from uh, startup to maturity. So we have a programme that we, we deliberately designed to help, um, help, help companies uh, navigate that journey. So we... Just recently, in the last couple of weeks, the mayor, uh, the mayor of London and our chair, Liz Goodwin, um, launched a venture capital fund. Well, actually, it was a bigger fund, uh, but there's a, a part of that is a £45 million uh, venture capital fund, of which at least £14 million will be uh, targeted to support early stage circular economy startups That's in London. Fantastic. At least 14 million. We hope it'll be more actually. And those and those um, early startups, they can be on any area of circular economy or do they have to work in one specific? No, they're, no. they're, they're mostly going to be probably um, tech based because the, the okay. fund manager that we've uh, chosen, MMC, focuses on, on, on data and, and digital, the drive towards digital. So they're probably be tech based, but they can be across any uh, particular area. So long as they're demonstrating a circular economy business model, which we, okay. you know, that's that the rub is in in yeah. what that means we, we've got some pretty good ideas about that um, then we have a we have an accelerator a circular economy accelerator at our circular offices in Wilson I Street know, I came there for the first time two which ago. we're very pleased and proud of um, and we have some uh, six um, uh, uh, startups in the built environment and the first investment that the venture capital fund has made from a circular economy perspective is one of those startups. So it just goes to show it's already working. We also have an investment in Jamie Butterworth's Circularity Capital yes. um, Enterprise, which or fund, and he, he's you know he's raised or they've raised something like 50 million pounds from mostly private sector uh, sources, which just goes to show the interest of the investor community in mm -hmm. this space. And we were one of the first investors in. Um, 
in that fund. So we're really pleased about that. Um, and then underneath all of that, we have a, a business support team who are, again, they're an in-house team based uh, at, at our head office who support circular economy businesses with business advice. So they're not telling them how to save waste or, uh, or, or reduce their energy footprint. Not that that's a bad thing, but they're giving them business advice to help scale them up. So, you know, we've so got it's some... not just skills out in the economy and in the city, it's also skills in the public administration and yes. like the learning that happens internally. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah. And we'd, we, you know, we, we'd like to kind of um, disseminate that model and, um, uh, and disseminate that to, to other cities and sell that to the private sector as well. Those kind of skills, you know, we've yeah. got some skills that we can sell. Yeah. And between all three of you, you've all touched on so many different stakeholders in your examples that are involved, like the education side, uh, the multiple public officials in all those examples, um, the finance side there with uh, the examples of the funds that are involved, tech, um, mm. the whole technical revolution yeah. that I think can really be pulled into achieving this transformation. In, in mapping that out, we've probably all, to a certain extent, either done this formally or we know it informally. We'll right. have, within our cities, the sectors that are... Uh, big in our cities so um, you know in London it's finance it's government it's education it's media and then we'll have our focus areas so ideally we'd have a, a program operating you know at that nexus between say the media and fashion right. or finance and tech or, or, or finance and food or whatever it may be you know you could imagine mm -hmm. a program in each of those areas if you if you thought of that as a matrix so that's that's how we've set ourselves up. What are some of the challenges and opportunities that you see in continuing to drive the transition? Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this, this exchange of practices is, is the great thing to do now. Right. And in our city, in our country, actually, unfortunately, we have a culture of waste. Right. So we need to change our mindset. Mm -hmm. That's why qualification and sen sensitivity sensibilization to, is to, to sensitize, sensitize yeah. to sensitize the whole community is too important for us uh, that's why this opportunity uh, as Sao Paulo city as a flagship city from yeah. Ellen MacArthur Foundation and this opportunity to 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 know other cities and to learn with all of you guys it's it's really rich it's too important to to our communi community and to our city. It's interesting because we had a question online about was there a risk that cities would just compete and would they forget to collaborate? But it sounds like you're going to say no, they will collaborate. No, they certainly will. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm sure of, I, I'm so sure uh, that that's what we've been doing f since Wednesday when we met the first time. And uh, another, another question who is, uh, which is really hard in our city is about logistic. It's about of the territory, it's mm -hmm. too big, mm -hmm. it's hu too huge, and we need to, to focus and to get more collaboration about logistics. Okay. I think it's a strong point that we need to And when you're saying logistics, are you thinking the same for people and for materials, or which or are you focusing on both? Both, both, both. both. To, to sensitize and to make things work. Okay. Our campaign from, for food, against food waste and for food security, we, need, we have a food bank in the middle of the city right. and we need to distrib distribute Distributive. from 310 now social organizations uh, fruit, vegetables and leaves that are proper to consume and they are going to be composting. Mm -hmm. So we put all this food together and we have to separate, clean and to send to these entities. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. Logistics uh, is going to yes, play yes, a big part. It is. What does it look like in Milan, the opportunities and challenges to moving forward on circular economy? Uh, of course, uh, city. We, we are collaborating. I mean, uh, this is, for example, the, the aim of the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact. It's, yep. it's a platform for mayors and officers to share and learn good practices on the sustainability, the sustainability of the food system. So we should, but we are, we are collaborating. 
uh, opportunities for Milan that I see. Uh, I think it's the, um, as, as we all said, is the, um, the involvement of citizens, but in particular, I, I think, the involvement of the youngest generations. Uh, um, we are in a particular moment now in which uh, young people, students are uh, becoming aware uh, of uh, and are eager to learn about uh, uh, climate change, reduction of uh, uh, the consumption and, uh, and, um, and, and everything connected to the, the reuse of the materials. So mm -hmm. uh, we should uh, make them, of course, a part of the, of the solution and helping them to shape uh, our, our system from linear to circular. Uh, one of the key projects uh, on, uh, on education uh, in Milan is called Ambiente a Scuola mm -hmm. and the, the aim is to, uh, in, to push behavioral changes in, uh, in, in the young people uh, about reuse, recycle, uh, restore and reduce. Okay. So this is, this is an opportunity, a big opportunity, but I think around the world, I mean, not, mm -hmm. not just in Milan. And uh, challenges we would like to um, to understand and to and 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 to foster our um, to, to focus our attention to um, financial tools that can help uh, cities to become more circular. Okay. But as we uh, are member of the of the program CE100 of the yes. foundation. Yeah. I'm sure that we can we can find uh, we can meet this this challenge together and also uh, collaborating with London in, with the project that you mentioned before. Yeah, and why why is it that finance has risen to your mind as one of the key barriers? Because it's I mean uh, fund I mean fund project is the is the the first step to to start those projects. So for example. Uh, also, could be in a in in, in a circular uh, way of see of see also funding, uh, maybe something that uh, uh, some fund that can come from the saving of the first project started on circularity. Yeah. Okay, and because that's they a produce really powerful savings, so. message to tell that, like, because you're trying to achieve behavior change or, or production change or consumption change, mm. and that that you're telling a story of systems, so if that money can then flow back into that new system that you're trying to create is a, is a strong story. At the foundation, cities are for us a really important part to focus a lot of our work around. Uh, it's been mentioned several times, we've got a new initiative around food which is centred on cities and all of these cities are involved in that. Um, uh, and we've also done a piece of work recently looking at the circular economy opportunities in buildings, mobilities and products um, and examples of what some cities are doing in terms of how they bring it to life. Um, so uh, if you're interested in any of those things, do find out more on our website and we're going to be playing out by a short film about that and in the meantime I just want to say thank you for being in London with us today. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Check out the resources from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Circular Economy in Cities is a suite of online resources which provide a reference point for urban policy makers. It will help you understand what the implementation of circular economy principles in cities can look like with fact sheets on the opportunities and benefits that a circular economy can bring to cities, guidance on which levers can be used to accelerate this transition, case studies from cities that have already been putting these ideas into practice, and links to other networks and resources to learn what other organisations are doing on the topic of circular economy in cities. If you're ready to take things further, you can join networks of cities, businesses and institutions all collaborating on the circular economy. Search for a circular economy in cities or visit ellenmacarthurfoundation.org.